8.44, let's take a look at sport. Let's get a full round-up from the BBC Sports Centre. Here's Ore. Good morning to you. Now, Britain's uh, new chief vet-elect says we should ban the religious slaughter of animals if Muslims and Jews refuse to kill them in a more humane way. Traditionally, Jewish and Islamic slaughter practices involve animals having their blood drained, but now there are suggestions that animals should be stunned so that they are unconscious before the fatal cut is made. What level of suffering is actually caused to animals slaughtered in this way? Because we've had a comment from um, the Vice President of the Board of Jews saying that animals that are killed away for Jewish and Muslim markets do not bleed to death. Insensible to pain, that's no, what you're saying. Ab absolutely not. Slaughter of animals in, without stunning recently. How did it go about? I think a, a meeting of minds is a phrase you've used correct, on this yes, rather yes. than an outright ban. How do you balance your welfare? Well, the first thing with halal, percent of uh, animals halal, uh, slaughtering uh, is there already of these sorts of slaughtering practices, and how are you going to go about trying to, well, it, to eradicate it and taking up consultation then on this? Association, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Headlines coming up, but first let's catch up with the weather and it's... I'm Anita McVeigh and later in the programme we'll be live in South Africa as the Oscar Pistorius murder trial enters its fourth day. Sperm. Now, the fourth day of the Oscar Pistorius murder trial has opened in South Africa. The athlete has pleaded not guilty to intentionally killing his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp. Well, let's head straight to Pretoria now and join my colleague, Karen Giannoni. Good morning to you, Karen. Uh, so the court uh, proceedings on a short break at the moment, as I understand it. And we saw Barry Rue there continuing to try to pick apart uh, these uh, witness testimonies. Karen, what has the demeanour of Oscar Pistorius been and indeed Reva Steenkamp's family through all of the proceedings so far? David Cameron is talking in Brussels. Let's just hear what he's got to say about Ukraine. That would be even more unacceptable. The government of Libya says Colonel Gaddafi's son, Saadi, is in custody after being extradited. Hello, very good morning to you. This is BBC News with Simon McCoy and Anita McVeigh. Just up half past nine, our main stories this morning. Now, we're just going to uh, take you back to uh, David Cameron arriving at those talks in Brussels to try to uh, decide on an EU response uh, to Russia over its occupation in uh, Crimea. And uh, we just caught the end of uh, what David Cameron was saying, so let's listen to that in full. Ori, thank you very much. Now, the man who will become Britain's new chief vet later this year says we should ban the religious slaughter of animals if Muslims and Jews refuse to kill them in a more humane way. Traditionally, Jewish and Islamic slaughter practices involve large animals being cut and having their blood drained. Well, John Blackwell is the president-elect of the British Veterinary Association. Uh, I put it to him the view of the I put to him the view of the board of deputies of British Jews, which says that animals killed for Jewish and Muslim markets do not bleed to death. And uh, he, I also talked to him about uh, the view from Jewish and Muslim people that uh, and his belief that poultry, sheep, and cattle should be stunned and unconscious before they are killed. Now, plans to prevent a repeat of this winter's floods on the Somerset levels will be presented to the government later today. A draft report has been drawn up by Somerset County Council and the Environment Agency detailing measures which would cost £100 million to implement. Well, the proposals include dredging rivers and creating a tidal barrier near the town of Bridgewater. Graham Satchel reports from Somerset. Now that report was from Graham Satchel. Just uh, a line coming into us from our health correspondent Jane Draper. This is about uh, a review into one of the key recommendations, possibly the key recommendation from the Francis Inquiry into the failings at the Mid uh, Midstaff's NHS Trust. And uh, it's recommending that healthcare providers be given a duty to be open about a wide range of avoidable incidents which cause patients significant harm. So uh, campaigners had been pushing for a broad definition of this so-called duty of candour. The government will announce in the next few weeks whether it will take up those recommendations. Uh, just one more line of uh, news just reaching us. Uh, this year's state opening of Parliament will be on Tuesday the 3rd of June. The government just announcing that. This is BBC News coming up. I'm Anita McVeigh and later in the programme we'll report live from South Africa as the Oscar Pistorius murder trial enters its fourth day. Matthew Price in Brussels. Any developments, of course, we'll take you straight back there. Now, the time is 18 minutes past 10. Uh, let's give you a reminder of the headlines on BBC News.
Yes, yeah, sorry about the problems with the sound there. Now, plans to prevent a repeat of this winter's floods on the Somerset levels will be presented to the government later today. A draft report has been drawn up by Somerset County Council and the Environment Agency detailing measures which would cost £100 million to implement. The proposals include dredging rivers and creating a tidal barrier near the town of Bridgewater. A, a big week for you. Um, what can you tell us about this report that's going to be um, submitted to you later? To help there, farmers? There is the immediate crisis, of course, but you know, people are very concerned that this sort of flooding will become a more regular, could become a more regular occurrence, and therefore that money is needed not only in the immediate term, but the medium to longer term. I'll just leave it there. Thank you very much. Uh, Owen Patterson there, the Environment Minister. Now, it's uh, exactly half past ten. Time for a look at the weather forecast. Let's join. Time for the sport. Let's go over to the BBC Sports Centre and rejoin Ori. Good morning. Ori, thank you very much. OK, we're just getting some uh, breaking news uh, coming in on the Stephen Lawrence inquiry. Uh, and uh, we're just hearing from the head of the Major Review. This is Mark Ellison, QC. In now, more than £30 million will be cut from BBC's th BBC Three's programme budget when the channel is moved on to the iPlayer. The BBC has today confirmed the TV channel is to be closed down as part of a £100 million programme of cuts. But in the last hour, the BBC Director General Lord Hall insisted that BBC Three still has a future. Lord Hall, Director General of the BBC, and uh, doing that interview with him uh, was our media correspondent on iPlayer. Is really a channel at all, or, uh, as opposed to a sort of a collection of programmes? Yes, this uh, is uh, the Mark Ellison report into the police investigation to the stabbing to death of uh, Stephen Lawrence uh, 18 years ago, uh, where he has said there is evidence to provide reasonable grounds to suspect that one police officer, Detective Sergeant John Davidson, acted corruptly in relation to the original Stephen Lawrence investigation. The Metropolitan Police have just issued a, a response, a statement, and they said, uh, we've only just received a copy of this report and it would be highly inappropriate to comment upon it until we've taken the time to fully read, understand and assess its content. Yes, the Metropolitan Police uh, also saying his report considers some very serious issues that whilst in the main are historical, could have a negative impact on confidence in modern day policing. Uh, the Metropolitan Police saying it awaits the Home Secretary's announcement on how she wishes Mr Ellison's work to be taken forward. So that, that the reaction of the Met Metropolitan Police to uh, this report by Mark Ellison QC. This is the report here. It does go uh, on for page after page. So uh, we'll be looking through that. And Naomi Grimley is our correspondent who's also analysing the details in there. But we're just getting uh, first readings ourselves. We'll bring you more reaction to that later. Well, uh, in a moment, we'll have a summary of the business news this hour, but now at uh, almost 10 to 11, a summary of our headline. More later. Thanks, Ben. Now, Prince Harry has been speaking at the launch of the Invictus Games at the Olympic Park in East London. The event, which will involve wounded veterans competing in Paralympic-style competitions, is expected to take place in the autumn. Yes, the Prince explained that he was inspired to get involved after visiting a similar event called the Warrior Games in America. Prince Harry, now it's uh, time for weather.